Ryan's making an appearance with me. So anyways, in today's video, guys, we are going to be going over five reasons why uh, sheep are the best livestock for a beginning farm. And by the time we're done with this video, I promise that you'll be able to take the five reasons to your spouse and pitch the idea and have them sold on why sheep are the um, best livestock for a beginning farm. So without further ado, let's get going. I'd like to say uh, real quick that they may not be the best in every situation for every person, um, but this is definitely some reasons why they're good for small producers. There you go. Okay. But Very caveat. true. Okay. So my name is Kelsey. This is my husband, Ryan. Normally he doesn't uh, um, come in with videos with me, but hey, today I guess he Here is. Today. Maybe we can um, root him on in the comments and he can come on more often. Yeah. But anyways, we started this channel to just help uh, inspire other farmers um, who want to start a small farm with a young family. And we just hope that you guys can get some inspiration uh, from our story and- um, Information too. And yeah, get some information from our mistakes, <laughs> our learning mistakes. So I have number five as fencing. Um, so we're gonna be going from five all the way to one. So five is fencing. So with sheep, it's really easy because they only take two strands of hot wire. And then I said that um, that eventually, if you wanted to get uh, cattle on your operation, it would be easy to transition to cattle with sheep, with that fencing. Um, if you go with goats, they take a whole different type of fencing and they don't stay, I mean, they can stay in with hot wire, but it's just really complicated. Yeah, we're, we're having pretty good luck with two wires. Um, I don't know if you've videoed that, maybe no. you can splice that in here, but just two strands of poly wire and keeps, they seem to respect it well enough. It's not perfect because they're such a small animal and they have a wool coat a little bit. They don't get a shock like a cow does, but, um, but we are holding them in. So, I mean, that's really all you need is to be able to keep them where you want to keep them. Definitely. So. Definitely. So number four, um, no fancy facilities needed. Would you agree with that? I'd agree with that. Yeah, for yeah, what so, we're doing. Yeah, yeah, so for cattle, like, if you guys don't know oh. our story, we have yeah. a cow-calf operation as well, but um, and that was already prior to Ryan's dad had cattle. Um, so when we, when we came to the farm, they were already here, so that was our first livestock experience. Um, but then in the last year, we've gotten the sheep. So. We kind of have facilities for cattle, but they're not the best. But with sheep, you really, I was thinking that like if you needed to do anything with the sheep, you would really just need like hog panels or yep. Yep. Um, livestock panels um, to build some kind of a corral system. And then working facilities, like you really just need. Um, you can be pretty bare bones yeah. at the start. Um, you don't need, because they're such small animals, you can handle them yeah, that's fairly what I was easily. But, um, as you grow, it depends on how many sheep you want to have, but I think there is sheep handling equipment and it's extremely effective and we've seen some of it. Yeah. It's awesome. We just don't have it yet, but you don't have to have that up front to have sheep yep. at all. Yep. Okay, so we have a question of the day. So it is, are you only thinking about getting sheep? Are you dabbling in it? Do you have sheep already? If so, make sure you leave a comment below because um, we'd love to learn about what your sheep block is doing and um, maybe we can learn from you guys as well. <laughs> we know that we're always learning, whether we're six months into sheep or a year, three years into cattle, you're always learning something new. Okay, so number three, easy management for sheep. So um, that's part of what I was gonna say with that other. When you buy sheep, I, you always have your goals in mind, or I would say have your goals in mind of, our number one thing was easy management and like easy care sheep. So we wanted to make sure they were parasite resistant and um, you know, we didn't want to deal with hoof rot and things like that. So we made sure to go with reputable breeders for that reason. Did you have anything yeah. else to add with that? 
oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, sheep are just like anything else. You can baby them. You cannot baby them. Some people do, some people don't. It's all your goals. If you're trying to lay them twice in a year, you got to feed grain in order to do that and get them fleshed up and different things. But, um, yeah. No, I mean, if you get them from a reputable source and um, you don't you don't baby them, they won't be babied. They just, you just may not have the growth in the, uh, quite the, uh, Oh, what am I trying to say? The the lambing crop that you would otherwise. Mm -hmm. There's there's definitely a balance there. You don't want to starve your animals. You know, we feed ours a little bit of alfalfa. Yep. Um, we fed just a touch of corn in with our alfalfa pellets just as a snack at night to get them in their sheep shed, which I don't know if that's been shown, but. No, I'll so show we, it soon. We supplement just a little, and we don't really know yet because this is our first year, but uh, I could go on and on about that stuff, but. We don't push them very hard. They get, they have access to prairie hay up here on this hill, and that's another point we could talk about. Do you have feed on there? Yeah. Um. No. Uh. -uh. Okay. Well, that's a big one. That's a big one to me coming from cows. You know, it takes a lot of sheep to make a good profit. That's a whole other topic. But we've only really fed two bales. Yeah. Two round bales all year. Two two well, sixteen hundred pound round bales is I, where we're at, and that bale's still all there. So yeah. it's. Maybe three, but I mean, it's just unbelievable. 30 sheep just don't take any, nothing. Yeah. I mean, as far as feed, you, you feed, you go to feeding cows, you'll feed, you know, two, three bells a day. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, yeah. Especially in the winter. It's amazing how little feed it takes them. Yeah. So number two, the sheep market is growing. So we just listened to a, um, uh, what was it? A podcast? Yeah, Zoom meeting the other day. Um, oh. And they were talking. I didn't know that Ryan knew it, which I'm just out of the loop. But 50% uh, of the sheep in the United States that are consumed are imported. So only 50% of that is being raised in the United States. So, uh, and I was going to say too, like the... And that's a shame. Yes, yes. Um, so get, get sheep. <laughs> but the pig market was destroyed so like us if we were to raise pigs we would and we tried to take them to the sale barn um it wouldn't uh you wouldn't get any profit for it and then cattle you want to talk about cat like just a brief about cattle market uh, it's been it's monopolized just, and kind of controlled and just there's been a lot of evil uh in <laughs> well it fluctuates in all a lot of the too. livestock industries yeah it know? fluctuates a lot too so but yeah sheep tend to have a growing market which is which is good. Yes, definitely. And then the number one reason that I said, since we are a family farm and we have young kids, that they are family friendly, which was a big thing for me being the one kind of to head the sheep. I mean, Ryan obviously helps and stuff, but having the kids out here with me all the time and knowing that they are um, going to be safe, it's okay, um, knowing that they're not going to get trampled by a cow or something, uh, Yep. really was um, a big sell for us. Yep, I can agree with all of that too. They're just super, uh, super friendly, they're calming, they're just loving little animals. I don't know, they're wonderful to have around. There's, I don't know, I think there's a reason that they were, shepherds were in the Bible, I don't know. It's just crazy, <laughs> they just have such a feel to them. They're yeah. awesome little creatures. And uh, yeah, William can be around them. I mean, our cows are calm too, but they're just, a cow unintentionally can hurt you because they're so big. So you big. Know? Yep. Yep. These are 150, 200 pounds. Yep. I mean, our lambs aren't right now, but you know, yeah. they will be. So. I was hoping to get them in the shot, and then I think the cattle are behind us too. <laughs> I thought that would be pretty cool. No, 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 I know, and the cows are back there too. Yeah, there's the cows right over there. I thought that Did was Did you fun. tell them why we're on the hill? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. That's in another video. Um, if you haven't seen that, I'll leave it See in the, the, manure that they're putting down. the link in the description box below, but we have a whole video on our sheep supplements. Ryan's a little bit out of the loop on um, some of my videos I've been doing. But. So be sure that you guys are subscribed. Our next video about sheep is we are going to be bringing you five different reasons um, or five different things that you need to know before you get sheep so you don't have to take them back like we did. <laughs> Ryan doesn't know that we're doing that video. But yeah, we'll um, be going all over all of that and you guys uh, um, will get to see what our mistake was with it. So thank you guys so much for watching uh, this video. 
thank you to Ryan for um, appearing in it. That was pretty fun, uh, spontaneous. He was like driving by and then I was like, no, you're okay. He's like, no, I want to be in it. I'm like, okay, sounds good. So thank you guys. We love your guys' support and um, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.